So back when I was a kid, I was a pretty big fan of Spy Kids. Probably because I was the same age as the kids in the movie, you know, so I watched it and I was like, that could be me one day. I talked about all this back in my Spy Kids 1 video, so check that one out if you haven't seen it yet. But for whatever reason, I just completely missed Spy Kids 2 and 3, which I still would have been the target age for, but like I guess at the time I was just too busy trying to understand literally anything going on in Kingdom Hearts. And so I figured why not keep going with the series that completely destroyed all of our brains when we were kids and check out Spy Kids 2 The Island of Lost Dreams. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Star Trek Fleet. Command. Strange New Worlds is arriving in Star Trek Fleet Command. It's available for free on iOS and Android. Download now using my link down below. So Star Trek Fleet Command is a story-driven Star Trek open-world mobile game that lets you interact with famous characters from the Next Generation, original series, J.J. Abrams movies, Discovery, and more. I mean, you got Kirk, Spock, Michael Burnham, Data, Geordi, even Quark? You can choose your own faction and explore the entire Star Trek universe. The newest update adds Strange New Worlds content to the game to coincide with the new Paramount Plus show, also called Strange New Worlds, oddly enough. New missions are added every week, so you can play alongside the show, with some missions serving as follow-ups or prequels to certain episodes and even some of the Star Trek movies. 10 core missions, 5 side missions, 20 weekly missions, and 5 holodeck side missions. Now, the holodeck is the new building that lets players unlock the entire Star Trek Fleet Command universe, so new players can play through all the old missions and story arcs that they may have missed along the way. And like I said, the game is free on iOS and Android, so if this sounds interesting to you, download the game using my link down below and explore the entire Star Trek universe today. Okay, back to the show. So the movie starts off in the world's greatest amusement park, where the president's daughter happens to be visiting. Hello everyone, we want to welcome a very special guest to our park today, the president's daughter. Hello Alexandra. Where's your father? He'll be here. I'll make sure of it. Hmm, well, I don't know about you all, but I'm starting to think she might be up to something. It's like, I remember back in kids' movies when kids would say something and then cross their fingers behind their back, you know? And then eight-year-old me was like, oh! Also, is, is, is that the little baby version of Dan's sister from Gossip Girl? Why is she so small? Anyway, so the park owner guy shows her around, and they end up at the coolest, newest ride in the park, the Juggler. My latest and greatest. I humbly all. The Juggler. But is it fast? <laughs> is it fast? Well, let's see, shall we? <laughs> it spins it round and round as fast as the United States government will allow. I tell you what, it's just like the government not wanting us to have no fun. If I want to turn my child's brains into guacamole, who are they to tell me otherwise? So, the girl climbs up to ride the ride, but she secretly takes the key out of the control panel, which just completely breaks the whole thing, I guess. And then she climbs out, walks on the beam, and makes a big old scene about it. See, I told you she was up to something. He'll be here. I'll make sure of it. I saw it coming a mile away. Alex Myers, professional movie watcher. But instead of her dad showing up like she wanted, guess who the Secret Service calls to save the day? We meet agents SK-1 and SK-2. Hey, hey, I know them! So the Spy Kids effortlessly glide up the side of this giant thing, just hands sliding around, not even touching anything. But while they're on their way to save the president's daughter so she can grow up and go on a date with Will Friedle, that's when we get another surprise. Bring me agents SK-3 and SK-4 is back. We got company. Gary and Gertie, what are they doing here? Pfft, Gary and Gertie, always showing up to ruin everything with their stupid hair product. Now, right then, one of the Secret Service agents just randomly, out of nowhere, starts hitting every button on the control panel. What is happening here? Why are you even doing this? Ah, crap, the president's daughter's stuck on this dangerous ride. What do we do? I guess we'll just have to wait for our special agents to arrive. I don't know. What do you think, Johnson? <laughs> anyway, so Judy's the one who reaches the president's daughter first, and as you'll see, he's just really selling how serious the whole thing is. He's my father. He was my father before he ever became president, and he should still be my father now. I want him up here. The point is, you and your father need to have a talk. Up here may not be the best place. Come with me, and I promise you, the two of you will have that talk. <laughs> Judy, Judy, my man. Are you doing okay? Did this dude like just come back from the dentist? I'm not getting down till my dad shows up and gives me attention. You should try, how is he's gonna, it's all just, I mean, do you, have you ever, do you, do you know how to squirrel? Anyway, so in the end they get her down, but we find out that she also stole this special doohickey thing called the transmooker, which we have no idea what it is or what it does or why it's important, but it just is because they said so. So Carmen and Gertie stop the machine. Oh my goodness, is that, is that Emily? Osmond? Wait, was, was she born yesterday? And then Junie saves the president's daughter, Gary grabs the transmooker so it looks like he actually did something, and the day is saved. I think this is what you're looking for. 
She swiped it from the president. Well, you're in big trouble this time, Missy. Wait a minute. I promised her she could talk to her father. Oh. We'll talk to him, all right. We'll make sure of that. We then cut to Carmen and her mom back at home. And slight tangent here, but like, can I just say, has anyone aged more gracefully than Carla Gugino? Like, in this movie, she plays a mom who has a 13-year-old kid. And then 16 years later in Hill House, she plays a mom whose oldest kid is like 13. And she looks exactly the same. It's kind of like how Zendaya's character in Euphoria is the same age as Zendaya actually was in Shake It Up like 10 years ago. Anyway, so Carmen and her mom are just having a little girl talk. You know, totally normal stuff. Your duties are assigned to you by the agency. Same as everyone, same as me. I know, it's just that we've learned so much. Junie and I are more than capable of taking bigger assignments. The Spy Kids organization is still new, and if you're a level three or even a level two, you cannot go on a mission alone. Welcome to the Pentagon. How did you do that? You can't do that. Th there is no hacking in this household. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt here, but like this computer setup has got to be the worst idea of all time. All right, just got to finish up my smoky eye looking. Ah, crap, I hacked the CIA again. Now I'll never get to go on a date with Roger and hear about all his Warhammer 40k figurines. So later on, there's a special government dinner thing where Carmen and Junie's dad is probably maybe going to be promoted to the head of the spy organization, the OSS. But of course, that means Gary and Gertie are going to be there, so pff, yeah, whatever, I don't even care. Something doesn't feel right. No wonder your buddy's here. Your buddy with the weird laugh. He does not have a weird laugh. We were just talking about you. Really? <laughs> what the heck was that? Oh, it's because their names are Gary and Gertie Giggles. Because they giggle. Okay. But all the same, after Junie and the president's daughter meet up and do a full-on ballet routine for no particular reason, it's time for the main event. I am proud of the OSS and their newly formed Spy Kids division for their outstanding accomplishments yesterday. They safely retrieved the Transmooker device. Now it's my great pleasure to announce the new director of the OSS, Gregor... Donegan Giggles. Hey, wait a second, isn't that Gary and Gertie's dad? Now, obviously something's up here, okay? Because, like, why would you ever hire someone who named one of their kids Gertie, you know what I mean? But then all the adults drink their sparkling milk and you'll never guess what happens. <laughs> they, they found his spaghetti. Sleepers. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Ah, yes, this sounds like Benadryl. Now, right when this happens, all the waiters at the party who are dressed like this and have giant magnets on their heads, yeah, what did you believe? Turns out they're not normal waiters at all, but actually a group of semi-organized ne'er-do-wells trying to steal the transmooker device. But hey, leave it to our resin spike is to save the day. My goodness. Oh. But in the end, the evil grown-ups steal the device and make their escape. Now, somehow, Junie gets blamed for all this. Like, even though all the adults were asleep the whole time, all the other kids were busy doing Cirque du Soleil with their hair or whatever the heck. And the moment everyone wakes up, they immediately just give Junie the death stare. Know, as if they had no part in any of this when they showed up to this event thing, saw these dudes walking around, and they were all just like, huh, yeah, that's normal. But after everyone just decided that it was Junie's fault for everything, he gets kicked out of the OSS and now has to live the rest of his days as one of the unwashed masses. <laughs> Where'd you come from? But you know, uh, what's, <laughs> what's going on over here? <laughs> Now, Carmen can't stand to see him like this, all mopey and sad and stuff, so she comes up with a plan to save the day, but first, they have to go up to their super secret special treehouse. <laughs> Your name? Carmen Elizabeth Juanita Ecos Cabrava Cortez. Your name? Junior Rafi Razor Rebel Cortez. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Your name is what? Junie Rocky Razor Rebel Cortez. Your parents named you Junie Rhubarb Red Rocket Cortez? On purpose? Fun fact, turns out all of Junie's middle names are actually the names of Robert Rodriguez's real kids. Which, like, I really hope these kids were homeschooled because, like, <laughs> you're just asking for trouble. Although, to be fair, they probably grew up in, like, LA or something where all the other kids are named Apple Cider and Pepto Bismol or whatever. Anyway, so the next part of the movie is, of course, Carmen trying to find a way to hack into the OSS and reinstate Junie as one of the spy kids. And I'm reassigning you to the OSS. Don't tell me you're hacking into Already it. done. Level 2 status. Reinstated. Oh, okay. Now, Gary and Gertie have been assigned to the special ops mission of getting the transmooker back, but thanks to Carmen's masterful hacking skills, aka randomly banging on the keyboard, and figuring out the director's password was PlowMeSonic123, she gets the mission reassigned to herself and Junie, while Gary and Gertie get sent to the middle of the desert to do nothing in particular. Gertie, where are we? Well, according to my coordinates, we are. <laughs> they found the poop. Yeah, poop! Someone's gonna pay! Oh, jeez! <laughs> what? What? What the heck is wrong with you, Robert Rodriguez? Now, while this is all going on. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all going on, Carmen and Junie have to hop into their submarine and head over to this mystery part of the ocean where the magnet head guy suddenly disappeared. But not before getting a little help from an old friend. Bueno. How you doing, Minion? Things are a little floopy around here for my taste, but it's a living. I need some information on your favorite subject. Early 2000s Amanda Bynes movies? Transmooker. Smells like the work of Donegan Giggles. The guy's dirt. What should we look for? First, find the island. Then find the island man. So they head over to where the guys who stole the transmooker disappeared from radar, but as they approach, their ship loses all power. And so they have to scuba dive for a while and inflate their whatchamacallits, and finally, they end up on some kind of mysterious island where all their gadgets suddenly don't work anymore. And then they just kind of fall into a volcano for like four hours. Why? Close your eyes. Why? they hit the bottom, but turns out it's not actually a volcano at all, but some weird dude's secret man cave full of model trains and miniatures and at least like four body pillows, I assume. Who are you? You see something? Over there, hiding! What do you want? I want to get down! I'm Carmen Cortez, special agent of the OSS. I'm Romero, sole inhabitant of this island of Leaky Leaky. No, 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 no. Steve Buscemi is not in this movie. No, I refuse to believe this. And you are? Tired and hungry. Nice to meet you, tired and hungry. I'm Dad. Okay, so this is Romero, a genetic specialist who's been living and working on this island and gene splicing a bunch of animals together to make all kinds of weird things like a spider plus monkey, pig plus bird, snake plus lizard, Sonic the Hedgehog plus himself. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> but in unleashing these horrifying abominations into the wild, he's now stuck in his lab unable to leave. A prisoner of his own prison, if you will. He tried to gobble me up on more than one occasion. Why do they despise me so? I created them. You think God stays in heaven because he too lives in fear of what he's created? Butterfly in the sky I can go twice this But also, this is where we finally learn about what makes the transmooker device so important and why we're actually supposed to care about it at all. I'm no loon. What I'm still trying to figure out is why this island doesn't show up on even our most advanced satellites. I created a cloaking device to shield my island from curious eyes. Anything electronically powered that comes within a mile radius instantly shuts down. Any radar that passes over me is displaced, creating the illusion that my island doesn't exist. The transmooker device. Now, right that moment, we find out that Gary and Gertie figured out what was going on with the whole desert thing and followed Junie and Carmen to the island. So Carmen and Junie head off to find them and bring them all the way back to Romero's secret science shack or whatever this is. And this is where we finally figure out what's really been going on the whole time. They're OSS agents as well. They're Donegan's kids. Agent Donegan? You work for the OSS. I work for a man named Donegan. Transmooker device that hides your island. 
That's what Donegan really wants. Transmoker you took from the president's daughter, Gary. It was just a prototype. Did your dad tell you the mission you went on was just a setup for Carmen and me? We have to destroy the Transmooker. How do you know any of this? When was this revealed? So just to summarize the whole movie here, Romero invented this cloaking device and he works for Donegan, but also Donegan wants the device and Romero has no reason not to give it to him, but Donegan secretly sent his kids to go get it anyway, but just kidding, it was all a trap for Carmen and Junie? <laughs> What? So what was even the point of all these magnet dudes? Or like, the entire first half of this movie? Did you find the source of equal or greater power? It emanates from the north side of the island. Have you located the island man? He's somewhere underground. Yeah, we'll start digging. I'm on my way. Oh yeah, by the way, the island man actually works for me and I've been in contact with him this whole time. You know, <laughs> probably should have mentioned that one earlier. You know, kids' movies usually don't make a whole lot of sense, alright? But like, this is just on a whole other level. Anyway, so long story short, Carmen and Junie have to traverse the dangers of the island, like a temple full of skeleton monsters, or a room where they can hear each other's thoughts for some reason. I hate me. I can hear your thoughts. What? <gasps> and you can hear mine. Our mouths aren't moving, but we can hear what we're thinking. Say something. <gasps> How strange. And the worst enemy of all, the most horrifying CG I've ever seen. Somehow this is even more horrifying than the Fooglies from the first movie. I mean, this is the kind of thing where like you wake up at 4 a.m., you see this on the foot of your bed, and your regular sleep paralysis demons just standing there next to you like, the heck is that? But all the same, after escaping from the monsters and the giggle kids, Carmen and Junie make it to the top of the world's most inconspicuous ziggurat tower that no one could have ever possibly found until now. And finally, they reach the Transmooker. What do we do? We must find together the three toggles. Give it to me. Give it. Dad. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Did, did, did you not see the flying pig just now? I don't know. The spork took it. Back to its nest. <laughs> what? How much better drill are they giving these kids? So now that the transmooker device has been turned off, the spy kids can use their gadgets again. So Carmen flies up with her rocket shoes and takes it back from the pig thing's nest. And then their parents and grandparents just randomly show up, having literally done nothing the entire movie. And at the very, very end, Donegan gets in a fist fight with Antonio Banderas, and we find out that Gertie is actually a good guy, and she sabotaged the transmooker so no one can use it anyway. Okay, but like, according to the movie, the transmooker can like, scramble radar and stuff, so like, what did they think was gonna happen here? And then, yeah, it's pretty much how the movie ends, except for this random song and dance number that Carmen does just out of nowhere. So this movie's subtitled Island of Lost Dreams, but like, it's pretty much just a regular island. I thought it was gonna be some kind of Shark Boy Lava Girl type of thing, but it's just a normal island with weird science animals on it. I mean, the only lost dreams here is just me not being able to sleep for four days after watching this monstrosity. Now, obviously, with these videos, I skipped through a lot of the movie, but I'll tell you, this movie actually actually makes less sense if you watch it all the way through. Like, what even was this? If you tried to explain this movie to anyone, you'd sound like a complete lunatic. So in summation, uh, kids' movies are kind of weird. You know what I'm saying? I mean, kid stuff has always been weird. Okay, let's just get that out of the way. I don't know. I'm, I'm real, real revolutionary idea here on YouTube. You know, kid stuff is weird. You know, there's like weird Nickelodeon. You, know, you got your Victorious and your iCarly and you got weird Disney Channel stuff. But like Robert Rodriguez, was just a huge, I mean, I mean, his movies were huge back in the day, right? I mean, he had like basically four bangers right in a row. Spy Kids 1, 2, and 3, Sharp Boy, Lava Girl, boom, just like insane. Yeah, you know, and, and like I said, I love Spy Kids 1 as well, and I just cannot understand why. Well, okay, Spy Kids 1, Spy Kids 1 is more watchable than I thought it would be, but this movie is just, ooh. This was something. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like with Shark Boy and Lava Girl, where it's like, you know, every kid, even nowadays, kids grow up watching this movie, and it's like, oh, I loved that when I was a kid. That was my childhood. And then I, I watch it back, you know, and, and I'm just like, how, why did Eddie, what, how? And I, I and while I was, uh, while I was making this video, I just read, um, this was just announced, I think, pretty recently, but apparently there's, 
There's going to be like a new Spy Kids movie series that Robert Rodriguez is making, you know, because there was a sequel to Shark Boy and Lava Girl that did like super well some, some, somehow for some reason. And then now he's making new Spy Kids movies, you know, and then there's a there's a We Can Be Heroes 2 as well. So Shark Boy Lava Girl 3, perhaps. Uh, so, you know, I mean, this dude's just back on top of the game with Netflix, but I, I honestly couldn't tell you why. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com. Let me know what uh, TV shows or movies you think I should check out next. I have a podcast with my girlfriend. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango and also the Kelsey and Alex Show. You know, it's, it's, basically, it's two different shows where we just talk about whatever we want. That's all. And above all else, everybody, have a great day, and I'll see you all next time.